Welcome to part 9 of the Intermediate Revit course, where we're going to start looking at placing cameras to create 3D views and perspectives inside of Revit. If you'd like to get access to all of the course files, materials and resources, as well as 4 hours of ad-free content, you can feel free to check out the full course on my website. I'll see you there. Alright, so what we're going to do now is start to add in some 3D views. And I'm not talking about just using a 3D view like this, but to actually have some perspective drawings that we can add to a sheet, some perspective drawings that we can render out and make look really good. The first thing we're gonna do is go to our ground floor plan because we know that we want a render, an internal render from this games room. We've already said that we want a render from here, but you can't just go to a 3D view and then take a render from this view. You need to set up a camera so that you can get a perspective render from that view. To do that, we're going to go to the view in our ground floor plan and we're going to set up a 3D view. Now, just pressing this brings us to our 3D view, but by pressing the drop down button, you can see that there's a camera. This is what we use to set up a 3D view. You can left click to place the camera. Let's say we wanted the view to be looking from this doorway into the games room. Something similar to this because the door is just here. Place the camera. That hasn't created a 3D view yet because you need to specify where you'll be looking. And as you can see, there is a view range which you have to specify. So once you place the camera, you can pick where you want it to look out to. And you can change this after and you will change it after more than likely, but you want to specify a spot that is generally where you want it to be looking. So we want it to be looking outside so that we can see the pool in the background, so we can see the garden in the background, but then also so we can see this space. So let's go ahead and bring it out to about here and we can see what that looks like. Now it's not exactly how we would like it to be, but what you can do is adjust these control points to then bring out the space, bring down, adjust this view to make it seem like what it does in this view. As we're changing some of these values, the perspective does distort. And so obviously you don't wanna adjust this too much, otherwise it can look a little bit funny. For the most part, you can slightly adjust these without changing the perspective distortion too much. One thing to adjust would be the height of where the photo is being taken from. And you can adjust that under the camera settings in properties and you've got the projection mode. You could make this orthographic if you wanted to, which might look a little bit funny, but we're gonna change it back to perspective and you can change the eye elevation as well as the target elevation. So at the moment, this is looking from 1750 above the ground floor and then the target elevation is also 1750 above the ground floor. So then by making the target elevation lower than the eye elevation, it will be looking down but by making it the opposite, it will be looking up. So if we change the eye elevation, we can probably keep this as 1750, as that is the average eye height of some people. But what we might wanna do is change the target elevation to be looking down a little bit. Now in this view, that looks like what's happening. It looks like it's just looking out in a straight line. There's no incline or decline on the target elevation. So that should be fine to be left at 1750 by 1750. We're going to just adjust this crop to be similar to what we've got here. So you can see that it's showing most of this left wall and most of the ceiling as well. But then it comes over and you can see that this is the second window here. It's just a few bricks over from that second window. So that's the second window. Obviously this is going to come in probably about to there. And you can see that the couch is only just being clipped off. So we can probably bring this up a bit to about here. And that's showing most of the wall. You can see outside to that pool. And if we change the view to be realistic, we can see that a little bit better. But as you can see, it is cutting off what's in the distance. So we can change that far clip offset to be much further. Otherwise we can just turn off the far clip by unchecking far clip active. And now you can see it's showing everything in the distance. I might actually drop the eye elevation to about 1600. We'll see what that looks like. Then I'm just gonna bring this up a bit more. So as you can see, we've already got a view that looks quite similar to this, but this is, I guess the base point for then being able to set up a detailed render. Because once we've got the view set up, that's when you can start detailing up the model and the view to show everything that you want to show. If we were just doing a render of the internal games room and then another external render from up here, 
we wouldn't need to detail anything else in the model around the place or inside the building because it's not going to be shown to the client or to the, your colleagues or whoever you're showing these renders to or the drawing set to. That's why it's always important to set up your renders first to set up your 3D views because then you know that you'll only have to detail up this room and what's being seen in this view. So you're going to have to add some garden outside. You're going to have to add in some curtains maybe, maybe detail up this carpet and some of the things on the side here. But if it's not being shown in this view, then there's no point detailing that up in your model. And what we can actually do is start Enscape to have a look at what this would look like when it's actually rendered out using Enscape because that's what we'll be doing. The native renderer in Revit is okay. It's not the best. As you can see, I see a lot of firms that would just take this image and put it onto a sheet and then add that to the drawing set. But as you can see with Enscape, you're getting a lot nicer views. You can get a lot more photorealism with Enscape, which some people like, some people don't. So what we're going to do is just get one more external render and we might get this from the front so that we can detail up some of the stuff out the front here, like the garden and the driveway. I'm going to go ahead and go to the ground floor and go back over to the view tab, go to 3D view and add in another camera. So you can see whereabouts the fence is. And so we want it to be on the inside of the fence. I'm going to place a camera in the corner here and we can adjust this later. But we want the 3D view to show something like that. And we can bring this out to show a bit more. And again, we're going to turn off the fire clip. And so you can see from this view then that we already need to change some of the materials on the wall back here. And we have to model up the garden that's um, existing that comes around here as well as the driveway and there's a fence that runs along here so we probably actually don't need to show that much we can probably bring that back but there's a lot more that we have to model in so that we can show what we need to show in these renders and so now what we're going to do is add in all these extra details to this render and make it look decent enough to be able to render out and add to our drawing set. In the next lesson, we're going to go over modeling up some of the interior details to this model. If you'd like to get access to all of the course files, materials, and resources, as well as four hours of ad-free content, you can feel free to check out the full course on my website. I'll see you there.